Hey friends, welcome to the Raising Boys and Girls podcast. I'm Sissy Goff. And I'm David Thomas. And I'm Melissa Trevathan. And we're so glad you joined us for this conversation. Let's dive in. We have invited a dear, trusted friend for this week's Parent in the Trenches, Jamie Thompson. We cannot wait for you to listen in and learn from her kind, engaging wisdom. So as we are sitting down to talk today, I had to put little dog to sleep yesterday. I had the privilege of loving for 15 years. David tried to talk me really hard out of coming into the studio today tried to do all of it without me and which you would have done a beautiful job and the reason I wanted to come is because of this conversation Mm. because in sitting with this loss in particular of losing a dog there aren't many people that I know get it as much as you do Jamie and there are not many people that we both in the world value their kindness and their empathy and their heart and their wisdom as you. And so I literally was like, no, 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 I'm coming to sit with Jamie Thompson. And I just, um, I mean, we were riding up in the elevator saying it is the kindness of God that we would get to sit with you today. So thank you for your years of friendship to me, to David, to Daystar, to Lucy. I mean, you I saw I was out of town somewhere and she was sick and I was panicked and I saw you at the airport. I don't even know where we were, North Carolina or South Carolina or yes. something. And you were texting me, How's Lucy? What's happening? I mean, you just you have loved on both of us and our dogs and the kids at Daystar and you just have been such a gift. So I'm just so grateful to get to have time with you. We both are. Yes, we are. Yes. So, will you talk about yourself, which you don't ever do? (laughs) Will you talk about your family? Will you talk about how we have had the pleasure of our lives intersecting with yours? And you come in to taste our being involved. It's an honor to be here with the two of you. Anytime Mm -hmm. um, I run into you or I'm in the little yellow house, it truly is um, the brightest light, the warmest light. And as everyone listening knows that um, there's just... No better listeners than the two of you. So it's an honor to come and visit. I, um, let's see, I've been in Nashville since 1996 and um, went to graduate school for counseling and was a counselor for several years until I had kids of my own. And then I forgot all there was to know about counseling. (laughs) Um, I've been married for 23 years to Mm Dee and we have four children, 21. Our son DeWitt is 21. Helen is 19. Mm-hmm. Grace is 16. And Laura is 14. And, and we have amazing humans. We yes. have Baker and Buster, which probably are the favorite family members. <laughs> yes. So. And what kind are they? Buster is, um, he is a, well, <laughs> he's a mix of a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And Baker is a um, white golden retriever. Mm. Mm. Yes. And you were were you two years behind me in grad school at Vanderbilt? That's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we really never intersected, but we shared a lot of friends. God was already trying to fi- help me find my way to you. I Sissy. know. <laughs> me <laughs> too, then. Jamie. I was chasing Aww. behind you. Yes. And then another dear friend of ours, Belle, brought you to Daystar one day, yes. which I still remember. Yes. And then to Hopetown. Absolutely. And then we were like, can she be on the board? We just want to have her around as much as we possibly can. Immediately we yes. had that idea. Yes. And thankfully you said yes. Yeah. Mm, well, it's the honor is mine. It's such a privilege. Us well, too. thinking back to your amazing four kids, all right. You are, we're talking a lot about teenagers at this point in this season of the podcast, and you have raised or are raising four. So will you talk about first just what's your favorite part of teenagers? Mm. When you when you say that, it just takes me back. I think, how in the world are they teenagers? When oh, you say sure, yes. you've raised four teenagers, I think I think you have the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> I um, can go back so quickly to dance parties in the kitchen mm. and coloring contests and um, mm. I would say my favorite thing about this is all the things they're teaching me. Mm. They, um, you know, it is a different world than when we were growing up and, and everyone says how much harder it is and how um, difficult it is. And at the same time, they are teaching me the kindness of the world that I 
that I don't always see. I see that this generation I have faith in, they're compassionate, they're collaborative, um, mm. they're wise. They, I think this generation, watching them with their friends and, and listening to the things that they do, I think we as parents have a lot to learn. If I can just be quiet and listen, I'm learning so much from them. And that's my favorite part of the stage. Mm. That's such a great reminder. And I would so agree with you. I feel like they're more justice oriented. They're Absolutely. pursuing purpose in really beautiful ways, whether that's in friendship or bigger picture. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I love that, Jamie. Thank you. Not too long ago, my my oldest uh, reminded me, he said, Mom, what do, you, what do you used to do that you don't do anymore that you love? Wait, say that question said, again. I like said, that. Mom, what do you, what do you miss doing? Mm. Um, that you used to do that you really love, like what do you, what do you, that you what don't a do anymore? Thoughtful question for a boy that age. Wow. And I think that is again part of the stage where yes. you know we, when we were busy reading to them or teaching them things, and now they can teach us so much. Mm. Mm. I love that question. Me too. What was your answer? Well, it was actually I used to love to paint and draw. Wow. Um, so he encouraged me to get out an easel and start doing that again. Wow. That's incredible. That is incredible. So what would you say is maybe more challenging about the teenage years? Challenging would be, um, that one takes my breath away a little bit because Mm. you just, with each one, I think when their light is dim Mm. um, and you can't, you can't always fan the flames for them. um, Ultimately, my prayer is that they will look to where the light comes from and where they can pull that back in. But I would say that's Mm. the most challenging one. When their light is dim. Mm. You sure are someone who, when that happens for your kids, fight for them and do a really beautiful job of calling you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say helping them find their way to options. Mm. I don't feel like you're taking them there yourself of doing the work for them, but you want them to have every bit of support and know you're in their corner and you give them options, which I think reminds them that they're capable mm-hmm. in this really great way. And I think ultimately we are, we're not meant to parent without, um, without God and mm-hmm. we're not designed to do that. And so I think um, when they see us in prayer and reading scripture, then hopefully that's a way during those challenging times. They are absorbing so much. Having raised a boy and now three girls, Mm -hmm. we would love to ask you, what's different in terms of what they need from you? There is definitely a difference, isn't there, (laughs) with boys and girls? And yet, at the same time, I think they are all so different. Their personalities are all so different. Um, First of all, I would say verbally. You know, with boys, I think a lot of it is you just go in and have to just be quiet. Questions sometimes... I think with men and boys in general, sometimes they feel like they're being interrogated. Mm. Where with girls, I think when we ask each other questions, it's showing conversation and community and and that we care. So learning that dance um, and the dance with each one of them is so different. You know, sometimes I feel like it's a little sidestep and you're tiptoeing <laughs> in quietly to the beat of the music. And sometimes you feel like someone's twirling you mm. around the room and you're so... It's each one is very different, but I would say that's the biggest difference is um, with boys trying not to talk quite as much. I remember a long time ago, David, hearing you say, be active Mm. with a boy. And uh, my kids would laugh. I'm not super athletic, so I was never the one to go out and dribble a basketball next to him. (laughs) But driving alongside of it, you know, when Mm. he's not, when we have to make um, eye contact or walking with a dog, doing something active and not right right there helps yeah we were just in austin texas and you had what you reported as the best fajitas of your life sissy those were the best fajitas i've ever had i could eat them every day yes Every Plate, one of our podcast sponsors, could help you eat steak fajitas for life, David. Get $1 steak for life. Simply add a 10-ounce ranch steak to your weekly order for just a dollar per box while your subscription is active. Now that's raising the stakes for dinner. You are so clever. <laughs> every Plate makes it possible to have Taco Tuesdays every week as well. 
I recently made the saucy cumin lime chicken tacos. I made those too. They were incredible. Get every plate and take back your time this February with fewer trips to the grocery store and meals ready in six simple steps. Save even more time with quick and easy recipes, including easy cleanup options and options ready in 30 minutes or less. They plan the meals and deliver pre-proportioned ingredients right to your door so you can spend less time meal prepping and more time on you. You have better things to do than worry about what's for dinner. Every Plate provides plenty of delicious variety with 26 tasty and affordable recipes that change every week. So it's easy to find something flavorful and satisfying for every meal of the day. You can also customize recipes to your liking by swapping proteins and sides or adding a protein to a veggie dish. Plus, add even more delicious options to your order with over 25 convenient sides, breakfast items, lunches, snacks, desserts, and more. Looking to budget your food expenses this February? Save big and eat great with America's Best Value Meal Kit. Their meals are cheaper than your average fast casual meal, so ditch the takeout to save money while still enjoying fresh, satisfying meals. They're the easiest way to eat affordably. Yes, get a meal for $1.49 plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code 49RBG. Subscription must be active to qualify and redeem a dollar steak. Get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code 49RBG. Subscription must be active to qualify and redeem the dollar steak. That's up to $110 value. David, do you know what's not always fun to talk about, but super important to think about? Flossing. (laughs) Yes, but that's not it. A colonoscopy. (laughs) No, that's not it either. Taxes. That is never fun to talk about and super unenjoyable to think about. Okay, I give up. Term life insurance. That is very important to think about. We know some great folks who make it easy to talk about and easy to do. Fabric by Gerber Life makes it simple to protect your family's financial future so you can focus on what's ahead, knowing your family is protected if something else unexpected happens. Term life insurance is one of the smartest financial decisions you can make, and the start of the new year is the perfect time to get it done so you can focus on whatever else the year has in store for you. Fabric by Gerber Life was designed by parents for parents to help you get a high quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policy in less than 10 minutes. Fabric has flexible policies that fit your family and your budget with quality policies like a million dollars in coverage for less than a dollar a day. It's all online and on your schedule. No appointments, scheduling, or piles of paperwork. Just apply when it's convenient for you. You could go from start to covered in less than 10 minutes with no health exam required. There's no risk to apply. They have a 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can cancel at any time. Fabric has partnered with Gerber Life, trusted by millions of families like yours for over 50 years. With over 1,800 five-star reviews, they're rated as excellent on Trustpilot. And Fabric has more than just life insurance. It's a one-stop shop that also has free digital wills, investment accounts that let you save for your kid's future, and you can manage your family's finances right from your phone so your family is prepared for anything. Join the thousands of parents who trust Fabric to protect their family. Apply today in just minutes at meetfabric.com slash rbg. That's meetfabric.com slash rbg. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash RBG. Policies issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company, not available in certain states. I have had the privilege of knowing several of your kids pretty well, and they are undoubtedly empathetic, kind, conscientious, compassionate, care so much about having a sense of purpose. And just as we were thinking about what we wanted to talk about with you, that was one of the things that came to mind so quickly of what have y'all done as a family to help instill that in them? I wish um, Dee was in here because he is very, he's very intentional about his parenting and it's such a blessing to get to do that alongside him. Mm -hmm. He is always sharing articles 
with them in our family group text. He's always um, fast to give you know, advice or stories of, of people that he's encountered, different things that he's experienced. I would say for me, it's generational of service. Um, I hate to even call it service because it's really just being with people. And I remember when I was really little, my mom would take us to the nursing home to read to older people when we were learning how to read. Wow. It's kind of how we would well, how you practice were is That's we would so cool. go into a nursing home and sit with them. And and her mom before her, I think it's just kind of in the fabric of our just generationally mm-hmm. just to serve um, in that way. My, I remember one of my daughters when she was working with Nashville Dolphins, and she wouldn't use it as her service hours because she said, Mom, they're my friends. Aww. So, um, that, Which is an organization that... That helps with children learning how to swim wow. that have special needs. Ugh. And I, um, so I think the more that we can do of that, the more I try to challenge myself to do that. And it's hard to find the time. But when we do, it feels selfish because I think we're the ones who are rewarded in the end for mm-hmm. sure. Yes. So you just have, I mean, their whole lives, y'all have done things together. Try to, and Nashville makes that easy. I mean, anything Mm. that's, um, but we try to do that for sure. Oh, I love that so much. Gosh, it's such a huge part of who you are, Mm. who I know you to be as a mom. It's so neat to hear you talk that through the generations generations and the legacy within your family. They did a lot better job than I do, but I I hope it doesn't trip, but I hope it goes back and with my, with my four Mm. of it. Oh, the, the ones before me I did it like better. They're so generous hearted. I mean, I'm sure they're not always at home because they're <laughs> adolescents, but out in the world. Thank which you. Is exactly who you are. Okay. I want to go back to where we started because all three of us love dogs. And, and even, Jamie, knowing you have a background in counseling, mm. just will you talk about the importance of dogs mm. in the life of your family? We've always had them. Um, mm. They, um, will go into the shelter and say, which one's been here the longest? Mm. And that's usually the one we, we end up with. <laughs> um, so they've always been a part of our family. And like I said, if, if everybody had to choose, that's probably who they would they would pick as being their favorite family mm. member. They, The unconditional love that a dog brings um, on a hard day. They, I think back to when they're little and learning how to read. Like I was saying, they and there's no judgment. I can remember them curling up on a dog, practicing reading. I think they can... Um, soak up all the tears mm. <laughs> like a sponge, and I think, I think seeing um, you with Lucy, and the way that Lucy has truly softened mm. countless hearts—too mm. um, many to count—the way that she can just be there when there are no words, mm. and when she would wave when yeah. you'd come into the room. Um, dogs are—I don't know how people do life without them. Mm. <laughs> They're. So C.S. Lewis said, our sorrow now will be but a measure of the joy we know then in heaven when heart shall meet heart. Mm. It feels like such a picture of it that just the joy, they just bring us so much joy and so much healing and such a picture of God's kindness. Yes. I was thinking even safety too. Jamie, when you were talking about your kids reading, I Mm. think about... My wife is a reading specialist, and she's talked about there's a national program called Reading Paws where they bring dogs into school. And Mm, she's talked about the research around children, kids with dyslexia, who are just so terrified of reading Mm. and how they won't – kids who won't read for a person but will read to a dog. And it's just the adults backing away and just watching that interaction happen. And I think, my goodness, the – kindness of God that he would make these creatures that we could all experience that kind of safety and love with. and Such a gift. It is. is gift. It is such a gift. Thanks for sharing that. Yes. Sissy, we just got back from Texas, and how many tacos do you think we consumed while we were in Houston and Austin? <laughs> there is no telling. And how many gallons of queso? Oh, and how many chips? As consistent as we are in eating tacos, we have to also be consistent with taking our vitamins. Yes, we do. And with this much travel, I can't find time to get to the store and buy the things I need in life, like vitamins. Guess what? With Haya, you don't have to. I love Haya and have them at my house. For Henry, David. As I've told you before, and I'll remind you again, they can work for big kids as well. I take them all the time. 
Typical children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise filled with two teaspoons of sugar, unhealthy chemicals, and other gummy junk growing kids should never eat. That's why Hyo was created, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Hyo fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full-body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Hyo is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. I need all that. (laughs) Haya is designed for kids of all ages, as David has proven, and sent straight to your door so there's one less thing to worry about. I love that they ship straight to your door. Parents and people who travel like we do have one less thing to worry about. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin, Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash RBG. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash RBG and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. So we'll go back to parenting so I don't cry more on this. So what, if you're thinking about your parenting journey, what do you wish someone had told you in the beginning? How fast it goes. Mm. I think I'm sure someone told us that, but it really um, it really does go so fast. The things that we worry over are gone so quickly. And I, I think another thing would be... Um, and a roller coaster, it is such a roller coaster. And if we can not get on the roller coaster with them. That's so good. Although there are so many times when I'm like, oh, I'm on it. Here we are. <laughs> We're on it. And yeah. but to be at the bottom cheering them on, I think that's. How do you get yourself off mm-hmm. when you find yourself on it with them? You know, thankfully, someone probably helps remind me that I need to get off. Mm-hmm. I have two older sisters that are um, that parent with me for the most yes. part. They, uh, having dear friends, I think so that is um, when someone can help you just realize that's a little, you're in a little too much. Mm. Give them that space. That's so good. Along those lines, what is some of the best parenting advice you've been given? I think most of it comes from the two of you. Mm. I can remember when my oldest was in preschool and listening to you speak, and that was I mean, just so just filling up notebooks, pages full of notes of the things I'm reading through both of your books. I have mm. you know, so many pages with the corners turned down. Just wonderful advice um, that we go back to over and over at each stage developmentally. I think um, my mom saying joy comes in the morning. Mm. A lot of times things at night, just sometimes they need a hug and tucked in with a prayer. Um, so I would say that's some of the best advice I've been given is you know, joy comes in the morning. Mm. I like that, a hug tucked in with a prayer, too. <laughs> I, one other thing, it, it was not necessarily advice, but it was something that I read that I try to cling to, would be from Corey Ten Boom's Hiding Place. And when she's asking her dad a question and he says something um, like, you know, Corey, you know, when a suitcase is too heavy for you to carry and I have to carry it for you to the car, you know, well, I, I think a lot of times there's things that are too heavy for them to carry questions that they have or something that they're dealing with. And I think we can let them take the lead. If it's too heavy, we, we kind of help them with it until they're ready to carry it. So mm, I love that. Mm. Well, thinking specifically about parents of teenagers and, and those who are just starting the journey of that stretch that is roller coastery just in itself, what encouragement would you give those parents? I think I would tell them, um, Make sure you don't try to do it by yourself. Mm-hmm. There are so many people around you there to help you, those who are older who've gone through it before and those who are going with you at the same time. Just lean in. Um, a lot of times when I'm trying to figure out something as being a mom and I and D has such the better answer, even if it's with the girls, I think you know he can come at it not quite as emotionally, um, leaning into your spouse on that. And I think ultimately... Um, like I said in the beginning, just with God, if we, if I call everybody I know, and then I think, why am I asking everyone else when mm-hmm. I just need to lean in 
to him and to scripture. And I think that's, um, that would be what I would tell them. Mm, And to cling tight, it goes so fast. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And now everyone listening understands why we've been counting down to this Mm, and all of what we meant on the front side of this conversation. Yeah. What rich truth. Mm. Okay, friend, we like to end with something fun and food related. So we have a two-part question, which is... And a third part, which is, will you go do this with us? <laughs> yes, that's exactly <laughs> <Answers always> the <laughs> third part. Queso or guac, and what's your favorite taco? I think I would have to say queso mm. and brisket taco from Taqueria. It's my favorite. Ultimately, it's who you're with. Makes it the best taco, so... Mm, that's <laughs> yes, very the answer true. answer's always yes, anywhere so, with the two of you. Anywhere with you. We'll hold you to that. Yes, thank you. Jamie, we love you so much. Yes, we do. Did you love today's episode? If so, would you mind sharing it with a friend? Send a quick text or email with the link to the show. Join us next time for another episode where we'll bring you help and hope on your journey of raising boys and girls. 